get sales lessons from experts and entrepreneurs go out there and be a spokesperson and the representative for the brand on how you can bring your a game in selling making sales requires putting yourself out there and being vulnerable to start and scale your business we need to negotiate for what we deserve this is ace the sales podcast and here's your host roshni burronia Hey there, so happy to have you joining me for today's episode, which is a very special one. It is a special episode because we have a young male entrepreneur as a guest, which is quite a rare thing on Ace the Sales because we are all here cheering on women business owners. But I thought it's been a while since we've displayed sound diversity and inclusion on our podcast as well. So here we have with me today Udit Goenka who is a serial entrepreneur and angel investor he also has a recent startup called firstsales.io so we are here to learn from Udit why he started a start startup about sales and what he loves about selling but before that you know the drill if you haven't yet followed is the sales podcast yet please wait no further do it right away because definitely you do not want to miss out on such valuable conversations like the one we are going to have today so hit follow like subscribe whatever you are seeing on your podcast listening app and now let's invite udit to the mic <laughs> Hello there it's so nice to have you on Ace the Sales podcast. Ah uh, thank you so much Roshni pleasure is all mine thank you so much for the invite. So you are like the torch bearer of diversity and inclusion on Ace the Sales because we have uh, very few men <laughs> coming on to this show. This uh, podcast is more curated for women business owners but it's always good to have perspectives of both the sides. So you got lucky today to be on Ace the Sales podcast. <laughs> much i'm i'm truly honored so before we deep dive into our conversation um, odet uh, would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself your business and yeah of course you have so many startups but yeah if you can just touch upon briefly on them and tell about yourself uh, sure so my name is odet goenka i'm the founder and ceo of two brands right now the first one is known as uh, pitchground uh, it's a saas marketplace kind of like amazon but for software and the second one is known as uh, forsales.io So we uh, we uh, launched forsales.io about four months ago. It's an email outreaching tool, or you can call it like a pre CRM uh, sales category software. Where if anyone who wants to uh, land customers through email outreaching, which is the best channel today for B two B people, uh, forsales is really crushing it right now at the moment. Awesome! I would really like to dig into this outreach strategies with you and everything about pipeline because that is one zone which uh, many entrepreneurs, especially women, uh, have so many innovations around. I would love to dig deep uh, into that with you. But before that, just a little light-hearted conversation with you around the other side of you, which is not uh, publicly available. So, would you like to share some of those things with us? Yeah, sure. <laughs> So tell us one thing that we won't find or know from your profile or social media or website. Uh so one thing that you won't find is I'm also a musician. I write songs uh used to but not in, like I do write uh, at times now because uh, the time is sort of a limited factor. I'm also a certified guitarist from Rock School University. So yeah I do play now the 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 amount of time that I spend on playing guitar is quite less but yeah I like Back in the, back during my college days, I I probably thought that I would become like a crazy musician or things like that. But then like the reality came in, right? I sat down with my parents, asked them like, hey, like, um, am I good? First of all, they, they did say like I'm good. Um, had a band about I think uh, this is something I've never shared anywhere. I had a small band as well. Um, what I did to perform um, at like different malls and things like those at times. I used to be like uh, good old fun days, uh, but then again, you know, like uh, making your career in music, uh, especially in India, is very, very hard. And Instagram did not really exist back in those days, or TikTok did not exist, where uh, musicians can just go out there, push themselves. Right now, 
it has become a lot more uh, simpler i would say in order to like showcase your talent but about uh, 15 years ago i think 15 14 15 years ago was in the case right at one point of time if you were not able to make career as a guitarist or a musician at least you would have got lots of female attention in your college days because <laughs> that is something that automatically comes with playing guitar i guess <laughs> so um Tell us one silly habit that you have which drives people around you crazy. I am sort of a very timeline oriented person, right? So if I if you tell me that it's going to be done in like 10 days, I expect it to be done on the 10th day. I'm not expecting it to extend on the 11th day. And if it does, you got to communicate. So that's something that I'm kind of like a little crazy about because I'm very certain about my own timelines as well in terms of ensuring that those timelines are met so that's something that uh, a lot of team members don't really like it because I'm literally like out there to get things done basically anyone who's looking to join pitch ground of first is please this is a heads up for you <laughs> absolutely No, but I'm sure it's a great place to work. And last question: Describe yourself in three words. I'm simple. I am simple. Wow, nice three words. <laughs> Very good. So thanks for sharing all that uh, fun side of you, Adit. Let's get into some deep dive questions with you, where we can have so much of learning with you from you because you work into the space of uh, sales and uh, CRMs and. everything that's related to tech in that area but before we talk about your entrepreneurial journey and how you started about all of this this is a sales podcast so let's make the first question around selling so i've heard somewhere that you are someone who loves selling and that's what this podcast is all about so uh, it is all about helping non sellers fall in love with selling so tell us what it is about selling that makes you love it so much which you are so much excited about i think the fact that uh, to convince someone and make someone say yes right i think that's what gives uh, pretty much most of the people in sales gives that kick you know like you're making the money that's that's uh, definitely important but more than that it's convincing someone to really say yes right and building that trust which otherwise would have never been established with a company or with a certain product and when you come in and this is where you know like no software can sort of replace the human aspect of the things right so i think that's what really gives gives me the kick because every single day i wake up i start from scratch every single day right? because every prospect that you speak with you're starting from scratch right every single day so this really sort of like gives me uh, gets me going every single day of my life oh that's wonderful but uh, you know this entire process of uh, building the trust and talking to the prospect is the most scary thing that uh, entrepreneurs or many people have and you are saying that's the most interesting part so yeah that's a good irony and contradiction there so when you say that it is fun to talk to people right from the scratch and build that trust what is your approach to doing that how do you do that what's the uh, like card up your sleeve when you do that sales conversation or that virtual call or in person meeting what's the blueprint uh, the thing is i never start with a sales conversation uh, whenever i start with a conversation i uh try to start a conversation on a much more humanly level right asking about them asking about their family asking about whether uh finding some common grounds if we find a city or i do uh, read a bit about their uh, social media posts prior to getting on a call with anyone or i do read about their titles and uh, many a times people often talk about their passion on on uh, internet as well right so for example i'm like super crazy passionate about uh, football as well and i love manchester united so Ah, uh, there have been so many instances where I've started a conversation with someone, and they have been a fellow Manchester United fan. And the first five minutes goes into diving into just talking about how good or bad the team is playing, how good and bad the certain players are playing. And when you find that similar passion, right, the conversation smoothens up at that stage. And I think that's the most important part that a lot of people in sales they don't realize that they try to start with, "I'm selling this, buy this. Here is a demo." um well let me know if you're interested no that's not how selling works you know so you have to first build trust with people and once that is done definitely they are on a call because they want to buy right but that's 
what you what they're looking to buy right they are trying to understand whether they can trust you with their money and with their business that's what a lot of people don't realize and they end up being uh, so pushy in terms of their approach that people generally don't like them or people generally hung up on them so this is what usually happens so um i think the change of strategy and also people are a lot more aware about what's going on in the modern world as compared to about 10 15 years ago so sales have evolved the way sales happens still remains the same the ideology remains the same but the approach has completely changed where you cannot have the same approach either you know and a lot of times people also look up uh, to you on your social media and see whether you can be trusted or not so if you see i'm constantly using just one word which is trust because when it comes to sales it's all about enabling and ensuring that that trust is established because that's the only thing that will make someone take out the credit card and and uh, pay you very rightly said that uh, trust is the factor that makes people buy from you but then also this process of building the trust is a long drawn process and most of the people and sales professionals or entrepreneurs lose their patience while building that trust so what are your tips on how can people develop this patience and persevere to pursue a particular prospect for a long period of time i think firstly people also need to understand the sales cycle right bigger the company the longer it takes to close uh shorter the company it's easier to close but then your ticket size is also small right because you're directly speaking with a decision maker in a large company one person don't make a final decision there are multiple people involved so there are multiple meeting that happens and their availability is important so usually then there's a process that's being changed so i think uh, one needs to have a very high level of clarity on their icp especially if they are looking to close in some very good early customers then i think they need to tap into the initial networks that they have possibly built or uh, more importantly if you don't have an immediate network available then i would highly recommend sort of like reaching out to small businesses where the team size is probably like just five people again the ticket size is going to be small but then you would be able to close maybe in a matter of a week uh, as compared to like several months so ultimately i am i'm a firm believer that startups runs on cash flow and not profits so it's very important that you at least get your cash flow going on uh and try to break even that cash flow even if you're cash, not cash flow positive it's completely okay but as long as you are uh, cash flow net even uh i think that gives a very strategic sort of strategy in terms of startups and also founders that i know for the fact that even at 10% churn and a 20% growth rate i'm netting a 10% growth rate so that sort of really helps me to understand the amount of money that's going to be coming in next month and then you can do all the prediction analysis and sort of hire more people hire more sales people or basically invest in other softwares as well accordingly so i feel these are the things that's very important that most modern founders don't realize and understand and also there is a huge myth that my product will sell for sure needs to be like really taken on a serious note that no no one cares and no one gives a little uh, shit about your product right people care about their own business so you have to ensure that you have that sustainability and patience and more importantly the clarity of your icp is very important during the initial stages of your business this is very important that be very clear about who you are selling to because that's what which will help you harness the people and the network also like you said that go to the first low hanging fruits uh, in your network so that's very important so um, what according to you uh, odet are your biggest strengths when it comes to being an entrepreneur versus being a sales person hey there hope you've been loving the episode so far just wanted to take a moment to invite you to ace the sales club which is a tribe of women small business owners who dream dare and do amazing stuff if that's you which i'm sure you are just sign up for it from the link given in show notes as every month we share with you tools and resources that can save you time save you money or help you make more money as a solopreneur so sign up for the club from the link given in show notes and now back to the episode I think my biggest uh, strength as an entrepreneur is is I have never given up right so I've openly spoken about uh, how my my last startup failed so uh, pitch ground is my fourth venture and I've previously sold a couple of companies and the only thing that I've realized is that you cannot give up right there is going to be out of 100 days 90 days will be down 
10 days will be up but those 10 days would be so incredible that it will surpass those 90 days so you need to sustain for those 90 days instead of worrying about those 10 days and then enjoy those 10 days when it comes in because the another uh, next 90 days is again going to be horrible right so it's all about sustaining it's all about just having the right mindset of i am going to keep going right i think that's very important uh, but when it comes to sales i think it's something somewhat very similar uh, as well if you just keep the entrepreneurship aside it's all about your willingness to just follow up right sometimes people get busy sometimes people are stuck somewhere so it's all again about like just following up which is very similar to get going right you have to have that approach but more importantly i think uh, people do need to change their attitude towards sales and only then uh, the others would start taking you seriously or else you will just get hung up every time you give a call to some true so i think uh, in both the aspects whether being a sales person whether being an entrepreneur perseverance is what counts uh, that you have to be at it very nice so they tell us a little bit about first sales.io i think this is a recent startup and uh, sounds very interesting because you are doing a lot in the outreach strategy sales pipeline building so talk to us a little bit about first sales.io so uh, about uh, 12 years ago when i built my very first startup it was in the hosting space we were building up cloud servers for saas and uh, vpn companies uh, back in those days as well ppc used to be very expensive right our biggest competitor used to be godaddy and uh, they were ready to like throw uh, $31 a click on a google ad right definitely there is no way a startup with bootstrap startup can afford to spend $31 on a click forget about conversion right on a click and um, the retargeting engines weren't that amazing that it exists right now all with all the ai predictability and things like those so we found out that uh, why don't we give uh, email outreaching a try right because it's very effective the first thing that everyone today when they set up their phone right is uh, set up their email address that's the first thing that they enter right and that's the first thing so the journey starts when you are buying just your phone that's where your journey starts and email is the first thing you might not have your phone number or anything else but you're definitely entering your email address because today everything is on cloud right so that's where the journey begins so that means everyone is available on email today you send out email to even um any sort of user regardless whether they are a, a male or a female right they are all there on every professional eyes out there on email so that's how i grew my first venture as well i grew my second venture pretty much using email outreaching as well and when i built when when i wanted to build my third venture right it was an email outreaching tool that failed because of wrong reasons because of wrong team and everything and that's one thing that i always wanted to build because that's one channel that i was so confident about even today uh at pitch round about 70% of the sales 70 to 75% of the sales comes in through email outreaching even today and that's when finally um, when i met my new co-founder and cto uh, during my journey at pitchground we started for sales.io which was my previous failure so we rebuilt it we relaunched it and it has been crushing it i think it's been like 4 months and we're already about like crossing a 400000 uh, in in arr in just 4 months and probably going to hit like a million dollar by the end of this year Wow, amen to that and uh, that sounds really wonderful. So coming to the context of our listeners specifically uh Odith who are maybe small business owners and solopreneurs who are not doing that outreach because here's the truth bomb that uh, many people fear sales, many people fear reaching out directly to people because of judgment because of a, a like a lesser confidence into oh what will other person think am i seeming very pushy or aggressive and all those uh, mindset issues so can you talk to this kind of a person to tell her that how a person can reach out to anyone who is their ideal client what are a few tips around uh, outreach strategies you can give to them So I have always sort of uh, so I do a lot of like sales webinars right and there's just one thing that I tell to people that sales is like dating there's no difference between both of them right because when you're dating someone and if you again sort of again I'm trying to share an analogy in a very simplest possible manner right so you have a prospect uh, you're taking out that prospect uh, 
on on different dates right and over here when you're talking to your potential prospects you're again trying to convince them right you're trying to convince them and then like let's say if they become a customer and in this case if they become your partner then you have to start satisfy all the needs and requirements and everything being emotional and all of those things happen the same happens with your with your potential prospect being a customer right you have to keep serving them you have to keep taking care of them or else they will just leave right so again that analogy is something that I give you. So you have to take that effort. If you're not going to do that, chances of you being successful in sales is going to be zero at that stage. So when, when you reach out to a lot of your prospects, you're going to get rejected regardless, right? So it's, it's completely okay. You just have to reach out to more people because ultimately sales is a numbers game. You have to reach out to more people to try and close in that one, one potential prospects for you. So similarly, right? So that's the analogy I often give to people and uh, try to make it more relatable. So it's completely okay to get rejected, right? You just need to reach out to right people. Maybe at that stage, your prospect might not be ready or they might not have understood your pitch or uh, they might be running low on numbers, which is uh, on budget, or it might not just be right time, right? Sometimes all of those things can happen. So it's completely okay. You just need to just follow up once again, right? So internally, like, you know, in a, in a sales world, it's, it's often said that keep following your prospect uh, either until they buy or they die, right? So, <laughs> so just keep following up. <laughs> <laughs> that is wonderful. See, that's what happens uh, when we bring another perspective to the podcast that we never heard of that analogy uh, uh, on this show. So good. Thanks for sharing that, uh, Odette. Let's take a flip to our conversation here and uh, focus on you as a startup founder who hustle, who works hard, who chases excellence over success and stays grounded by staying close to your family. So tell us about who Udit Goenka is, who is this role model, who is uh, for many young entrepreneurs uh, who are looking up to you? I think I would say like I'm a very simple person. Uh, I come from a, a very humble background and I've seen my uh, my dad like leaving at 5 a.m., 6 a.m. Um, in the morning to his factory when he was starting his factory and his own startup back in 1998. I've seen that sort of culture and then seen him coming back at like 11 p.m., right? And I would barely see him for like an hour. Similarly, come from a family where my mom has really worked very hard. And during her initial stages, right, I've seen her like um, handling the entire family with a certain budget, right, every single month. And uh, and I've seen those values. I've seen that culture. And I think coming from that Marwadi background, pretty much everyone around me is doing business, uh, both on my mom's and dad's side's family. So I've seen like entrepreneurship so close uh, to me, both my grandparents on my mom and dad's sides, they both were like business people. Um, and even my my uh, one grandfather who's uh, still alive, he's 87, still working, right? So when I see these people working so hard, I think those are the things, those values sort of like keeps me going, keeps me grounded, keeps me simple. And uh, my mom has always told me one thing that with no matter how much success you get in life, stay grounded because if you fall once, we're there for you right now, but we might not be there tomorrow, right? So if you stay grounded and if you fall on the ground while you're grounded, it won't hurt you that much, right? But if you're trying to fly, there's a chance that you might get crashed very badly. So it's very important that always stay grounded, always stay humble, always stay kind to people because that's the only thing that will matter in the end. That's so beautifully said. And uh, these are some pearls of wisdom that only parents uh, can give us. So yeah, thank you so much for sharing that here. So also, Udit, um, you are in the LinkedIn Accelerator program also. And uh, of course, you are a content creator and many people follow you as a person who has a strong influence on them in terms of what you say, how you showcase the startup world, how you communicate about what true work is, what hard work is. So uh, what's your message to these uh, young budding entrepreneurs uh, of today? To, uh, what is the right way to approach a startup uh, building and being a startup founder? I think I, I wrote a post about it not so while ago, I think about a month ago where I said that the media really hypes up the entire startup world and startup industry because they need to sell something. And quite often what happens is when you're very young, you it's very easy to influence, right? We've all been in that age. We've all gone through it. 
And the moment we read it, we end up fighting with people and like, no, this is right because everyone is doing it, right? But I highly feel that to build a startup, there are multiple challenges that you need to understand, right? First is you need to have money in the bank. It's as simple as that. If you think you can just build a business uh, without money, that's just not possible, right? Even if you're building services, you still require some uh, initial money to at least buy domains, to buy uh, software and things like those, right? The most basic things that you require, you still require investment. But more importantly, when you go out there and try to sell, and if you don't have much experience, you're going to find it very challenging to convince people to trust you. So I still remember that when I was um, when I was young, I, I did not keep beards. I used to look very, very young, like younger than my, my age. So a lot of people won't take me seriously just because of that. They would like, I don't believe you have done anything. And you're like literally 18, 19, right? So uh, it used to be very challenging to convince people as compared to right now, people know that what you have done, you have achieved. I always tell to everyone at every event uh, when any sort of young mind comes in that from 19 to like 22, or at least 23, work for a bootstrap startup because you will learn optimization and optimization for margins, optimization for businesses. You will learn that from 23 to maybe 26, 27, uh, work with a funded startup because you will learn growth. And from 27 to 30, work with a corporate because you will make money over there, right? You will probably generate your first million dollars in those four years potentially because if you have done so much, have good experiences, uh, you'll end up getting a pay package of anywhere from like one crore to like two crores uh, per year, right? And if you're able to crack that up, then most most importantly, uh, work over there for four years because not only you will end up making that seven, eight crores, right? Uh, which is a very good amount to start your startup. But more importantly, you would have also invested all of your 20s money into, into investments. And uh, more importantly, you would have built crazy connections. You could find your next potential co-founder uh, when you are at, uh, when you're working at a funded startup or you're working at a corporate, right? Because all of them are looking to take the next possible step in their life, provided they can find the right people to collaborate with, because you can't build a company with, a single person you need a solid team so when you go through this journey what happens is that you gain a lot of experience you understand about the industry you understand about the problem statement you have money in the bank and you have the right people that you have connected with and more importantly you have built corporate connections when you have worked at corporates so when you do that i also say this one quote very often that enterprise uh, this uh, enterprises drives your revenue but small uh, small businesses drives your brand so if you expect to make a lot of money by selling to small businesses, good luck with that, right? The real money comes in when you start selling to enterprises and you start having that six-figure USD uh, contracts with them, right? Seven-figure USD contracts with them. That's when you really start making money. So you build all of those connections because most of the enterprise connection happens on a one-to-one -one relationship building, right? It doesn't happen if we just slap them with an ad, you're not going to be able to sell them. Uh, because the sales cycle itself is anywhere from three to six months when it comes to enterprise selling. So when you do and go through this process, the chances of you failing um, in your 30s is going to be very less. The average age of a successful founder is 40. So when when someone in their 90s and 20s comes and tell me that I have wasted so much time in my life, I have not achieved anything. And I'm like, you're 19, 20, you're not supposed to achieve anything right now. You're supposed to learn right now. Right? You have your entire journey to make money, to grow. It's good to have that passion that you want to grow. You think that way. But then again, right now is a time to learn. Right now is a time to make that money. Right, right now is not the time to focus on building a startup. I wish 10, 15 years ago, the kind of startups that really exist today, right? The kind of technologies that are being built, if it was being built during that time, especially in the SaaS industry, I would have probably started my journey in a very different way, in a much more traditional way of, of uh, operating and getting into these companies learning because the amount of money that I have burned by making mistakes, I could have avoided by, by making mistakes on other people's money, right? Because life is too short to be making mistakes on, on your own money. So I think these are the things that a lot of young people don't realize. And when they start struggling, right, uh, during now that there is a there's a crazy bear run happening in, in the entire world right now, there is a recession happening. A lot of these youngsters are seeing recession for the very first time. And now they're finally understanding. I've seen so many trying to get a job right now, finally, 
right? Because the whole hustle and uh, freelancing culture was being pushed uh, by multiple people in the industry, but all of them started realizing that it's taking five months to crack a customer who leaves after a month of work, right? So there is no stable income, there's nothing going on. And more importantly, they're not gaining enough experience, right? And uh, while they're good at creating contents, uh, the content creation is not good enough, right? You ultimately need to have food on your table. Content creation is not going to help you with that. Paying customers would help you with the food on the table, right? So I think those are the things that a lot of young folks can sort of start realizing uh, once they start uh, understanding how things work. But I think this is what I would really recommend uh, those young people. Wow, that's wonderful. That's like career advice, financial advice, entrepreneurial advice all rolled into one. So <laughs> that was wonderful. Uday. Thanks for that. Any last closing uh, remarks and message to our listeners on how they can fall in love with selling like you? I think the simplest way is just send out like, 10 cold emails a day to your potential prospects. That's all, you know, just send out 10 new people, just send out emails, right? Even if you don't use any software, send out manual emails, it's completely okay, but send out to 10 potential prospects of yours and follow up with them every week. The moment you see them opening their email, go and connect with them on LinkedIn at that time because that's the perfect time to connect with them and try to establish some relationship. And uh, when you're also doing all of these things, make sure that your profiles are highly optimized because people will see all of those things and uh, they will they will start judging you. Whether we say this all the time that no one should judge, trust me, everyone judges all the time, right? Without, without that, there is no human existence. So you will be judged based on your cover picture, your profile picture, your headlines, how you do things, how you have built your story. You'll be judged on all of those bases. And if someone is able to trust you on, on the data that you have provided them, that's when they will end up becoming a paying customer. So again, it's a very important to optimize these things. And also at the same time, if you're cold outreaching, spend some money on PR because um, whenever you're reaching out to the first uh, time to anyone, they would Google you, right? They would Google you and try to understand who you are. They'll Google about your company. So if your PR game is pretty strong, uh, this is again a strategy that I'm sharing that if your PR game is very strong, when they see you like uh, being mentioned um, and covered by a few magazines and stuff like those, again, it enables trust because you have taken that effort, to build that trust with people. So do that. And I think a uh, sales process will become a lot more easier. And finally, just keep it simple, right? When you're having any prospect on call, Try to have a conversation before trying to sell them because conversation is what leads to conversion. Very, very important. Thank you so much. Those were all very actionable advices and tips. Thank you so much for having this conversation with us and being on Ace the Sales podcast. Thank you. that's a wrap thank you so much for listening to today's episode if you found any value in today's episode then remember to recommend ace the sales podcast to at least one of your business buddies you never know what insight they will get that can help them in their business so do some good karma today finally a loud shout out and thank you to the production team of done for you podcast who helped me in bringing this show to you if you too are looking to start your podcast for the business, get in touch with DFIP from the link given in show notes. Join me in the next episode for yet another conversation that can help you fall in love with selling. Till then, take very good care of yourself. This is your host, Roshni Baronia, signing off. <laughs>